So I've been planning to make this video for a long time and I just never got around to it. This is my uh, Stiebel Eltron um, whole house water heater and I'm really impressed with it. Uh, I've had it now for almost three years so I can really say that this has been a very durable, trouble-free, just so simple in the way it works. Um, at least in, in use, it's pretty sophisticated inside. Uh, and I won't go into all that. You can do your research on these. Um, I would, I want to say also that these are not more efficient than modern day uh, heat pump tank water heaters. And I would have one of those if I had the space for it. I don't have the height in my, in my basement to have the uh, heat pump style tank water pump, or I'm sorry, water heater because I have to have a, an expansion tank above it um, and it just wouldn't fit. So um, when ours died, you can see this the stain on the floor, the rusty stain from our old water heater that blocked our door here and took up all of the space. I said, I wanted something that was more space efficient um, and durable. These things last about 30 years and they can last longer if you take care of them. And that's what I'm about to do today. Uh, and what does that mean? To take care of it is means you're going to do a flush with some vinegar. Uh, and I do it once a year uh, because I, uh, our water here is somewhat hard, uh, a lot of mineral in it. Um, so it needs to be done to keep the elements clean inside. Uh, I also use a 3M Aquapure cartridge, which is a sort of an inhibitor. It's a food grade uh, compound that prevents the, the minerals from uh, precipitating on uh, in, the, in the plumbing. So I'm basically doing this as just an additional measure of prevention to keep it running efficiently and save energy. Um, you also notice I did PEX and shark bite here where the copper used to be. I did connect a green number six wire from the copper down to the copper that goes into the floor right there. And that's because without that wire, our plumbing system is no longer grounded. So that was important to do. I have to also say I've been very impressed with the shark bite. It, there may be cheaper, there are cheaper options. But one nice thing about shark bite, not only is it easy to install, the stuff is made of high quality materials, great ball valves here. Um, but the other thing that's nice about it is with this simple little tool here, with this simple little tool, you can easily re remove shark bite. So you can either keep your hardware or change it up or whatever you want and reuse it. Um, I like that. I just like having that ability to take things apart. And I did have to do that a couple of times during the assembly if I measured wrong. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've disconnected or isolated, turned off the power, turned off the power 50 amps twice, 240 volt, 50 amp uh, circuits, two of them, number six wire. And I uh, turned off the power to it, turned off the water to it by isolating it with these valves here. So everything has been shut off and then I was able to drain these stainless steel braided lines just into a bucket and let the water run out of the water heater. And that was all easy, super easy. It's like doing an oil change now, but even easier. It's kind of a less messy than an oil change. And uh, so now I'm gonna put vinegar in this bucket and turn on this electric pump and circulate it for about 20, 30 minutes. And then uh, that'll be it. And then I'll just put it all back together and turn on the water and then turn on the power. And I'll show you that part when I get to it. Okay, so I filled this bucket with the, with the vinegar. And I just wanted to show you what I put on here. There's a, that's just a small, uh, like a, a fountain pump, a pond pump that you would use outside. Um, and I just purchased some cheap uh, washer dryer hookup lines and just connected them 
to the cold and the hot outlet here. Um, and it just recirculates. It's gonna go back into the bucket and just go round and round for a while, okay? So I'll plug that in and, and get it going. So there you go, the air's all out of it. It's circulating. Got a little bit of a leak right there, but it doesn't matter. It's staying in the bucket. More concerned about leaks here. Everything's fine. So I'm gonna let this go for about 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, so I've finished the process of flushing and reconnected the braided stainless steel, snug those up against the, the fittings there. Um, they, they're fairly foolproof. I've put Teflon tape on them, but never needed it. They, they, they don't leak. Um, then uh, I've already opened up this valve to flood this cartridge, just replace the cartridge, the uh, anti-scale cartridge and I've I'm about to open this valve and that will flood the fill the the heater and then it'll go out here to this valve and I'll open that up okay I actually already did that to make sure I didn't have any leaks so that's already flooded and this might be a little difficult without getting two hands on it. Let's see. There we go. All right, so now everything's open. The valves are parallel with the lines. It's flooded. And then you come over here to the new breaker. Turn both of these back on. And it, now you see that this is power, but it says off. And the next step is to turn this temperature selector all the way to the highest setting and then back to zero. That calibrates it. And then we keep ours at 109. And that produces plenty of hot water. Okay, and that's it. Simple process.